So let's get started on our next part of Monday's lesson. Thank you guys for watching these videos while I am gone. Um, make sure you do this homework. It will be due on um, uh, uh, Wednesday when I get back. Um, and we'll be finishing up chapter four between Monday and Wednesday. So there, there will be videos and assignment available for Wednesday. So make sure you bring all your questions on substitution, graphing, and eventually addition method and story problems because we're going to do all of it on Wednesday. So um, good luck with that. And um, let's get started. Let me write an example here. Okay, there we go. Our first example is 2x minus y equals 3 and 5x minus 2y equals 10. And what we want to do is the substitution method. And so the goal with the substitution method is to solve for one variable and then substitute that expression for the variable in the other equation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put number one for sort of our step one. And this is solve for one variable in one equation. Okay, this is our first step. So let's do that first step. So which variable do I want to solve for here, x or y? Well, the correct choice is y, and I want to do it in this equation. Why do I want to do it in that equation? Because I actually don't have to do any division if I solve for y, any division except by 1 or negative 1. What that means is I'm not going to have fractions. And so that's generally a goal when you do substitution is try to avoid fractions if you can. Now, we'll do one where we can avoid it, and I'll show you how to deal with it. But in general, that's what I would like to do. So I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. And that gives me negative y equals... 3 minus 2x. I'm going to divide everything by negative 1. And that gives me y equals negative 3 plus 2x. Watch out for these double negative signs like you see right there. So this is the first step. I have solved for one of the variables. Okay? So what's step 2 going to be? Well, step 2 you then write the other equation, 5x minus 2 times y equals 10. So I'm going to substitute this expression for y in the other equation. And so instead of y, I'm going to write negative 3 plus 2x. So I've now substituted it. So step two is called substitute. Okay, and I usually say substitute in other equation. Okay, step two. So now this equation is all in x, so I can solve for x. So 5x minus, here's a distributive property. So it's negative 2 times negative 3, so it's plus 6. And then minus 4x equals 10. And then I can collect like terms. 5x minus 4x is 1x plus 6 equals 10. Then I subtract 6. And I get x equals 4. So now we actually have a value. All right. x equals 4. And then what we do with that is we go to step three. In step three, you can substitute the value for uh, um, 
x or y, so if you end up solving for y, you substitute for y. In this case, we solve for x, so we substitute uh, the value we found for x in either equation. So in the, and probably I should put x or y in either equation. And this is our third step. So um, you take the four and you substitute it in for x in one of the equations. So two times four minus y equals three. That gives eight minus y equals three. So we subtract eight and we get negative y equals negative five. And then we divide by negative one and that gives us y equals five. And so we have now solved this system and we have a solution, which is the ordered pair four, five. So don't just leave it as x equals y equals. Make sure you write the solution as an ordered pair. Now, what do we do with the solution? We want to check our work. So to check our work, we already know 4 and 5 work in the first equation. So check it in the next equation. 5 times 4 minus 2 times 5 equals 10. That's 20 minus 10 which is 10, so it checks. So I now know I have done this correctly, okay? So I know I've done it correctly. So when you do this, step one, solve for a variable in one equation. Step two, substitute for that variable, what you just found, into the other equation. And then once you actually find a number for one of the variables, substitute that, that value for x or y in either equation and solve for the other value. That's step three, okay? So one, two, three, and then finally, I would say step four, check. Make sure your answer works in both equations. If you make a mistake on one of them, then what'll happen is it'll show up in the other equation. All right, it'll show up as not working, and then you'll know you made a mistake, and you can go back and redo it. All right, let's try a couple more of these. Okay, sometimes what will happen is you'll get something like this, where step one is already done. Here I have y equals 3x. I've already got an expression for y. So I can skip right ahead to next two, step two, and substitute that for the y in the next e in the other equation. So this will give me 4x equals 4. I divide by 4. I get x equals 1. So there's part of my answer. Then step 3. I put that in one of the equations. I'll do it in this one. So I get y equals, whoops, not y, y equals 3. Excuse me, 3 times 1 is 3. So that's my other variable. So my answer is the ordered pair 1, 3. And I'm just going to check it to make sure in the other equation is 1 plus 3 equal to 4. Yes, it is. So I know I have done it correctly. All right, let's try the next one. Okay, there's our next equation. So step one, I want to solve for one of the variables. Now, notice I got a 1x and a negative 1y. So either x or y is a good choice. I'll just do x in this case. So I take x plus 2y equals 5. I subtract 2y from both sides to get the x all by itself. So I get x equals 5 minus 2y. Step two. I want to substitute that into the other equation. So 2 times x, which is 5 minus 2y, minus y equals negative 15. So now I need to solve for y. 10 minus 4y, that's a distributive. 
minus y equals negative 15. So that's 10 minus 5y equals negative 15. And when I subtract 10 from both sides, I get negative 5y equals negative 25. I divide by negative 5, and I get y equals 5. So now I can go to step 3. Since I know y is 5, I can do x plus 2 times 5 equals 5. That's x plus 10 equals 5. So I subtract 10, and that gives me x equals negative 5. All right? And so now I have y is 5 and x is negative 5. So all I want to do is check that. And so I do it in the other equation. I do 2 times negative 5 minus 5. And that is equal to negative 10 minus 5, which is negative 15. So it checks. So I now know that my answer is negative 5, 5, ordered pair, and I have done it correctly. Okay? So there's a couple of examples. That's how you do these problems. Okay? So let's go to the next problem and uh, look at some other variations. Okay. So I forgot to record this without my microphone on. I apologize. So I'm gonna redo it right now. Um, we have an example and the example in this case is this one. x equals 9 minus 2y, and x plus 2y equals 13. So what I notice right away when I solve it is I've already solved for one of the variables because I have x equals. So that step one is already done. And I'm going to substitute that for x in the other equation. So that's what I do. This is where the x was, so I put the 9 minus 2y there, and then the plus 2y equals 13. Now, an unusual thing happens here. Minus 2y and 2y add out to 0, and I end up with this statement, 9 equals 13. Well, 9 is never equal to 13. That is a false statement. And what that means is that we have no solutions. So this is what it looks like in equation form if the lines are parallel. They basically have different y-intercepts. So we're not graphing these, but we can recognize it when we get a false numerical statement. And our answer would be no solutions. So the next one, I change the equation slightly. I do x equals 9 minus 2y, and x plus 2y equals 9. So again, my x is fairly standard. I've already solved for it, so first step's done. I substitute it in the next one. But when I do that, I end up with 9 equals 9, which is a true statement all the time. Therefore, this is the case where we have infinite solutions. Now, the key to infinite solutions is you also have to write the answer. What do the solutions look like? And the way we do that, and I'm going to do that right here, is we put the set of all ordered pairs x and y such that or that satisfy this equation. So all you have to put is one of the equations because those ordered pairs have to come from that equation. So for instance, 0, 0 doesn't work because 0, it, gives, it doesn't satisfy that equation. However, if I let x be 1 and y be 4, then that one works, okay? 
if you put x is 1 and y is 4, you get 1 equals 9 minus 8, which is true. And so only ordered pairs that work, and this is how we write that answer. So what we would put is infinite solutions, and then we would write the set notation for that problem. Okay, let's go on. So the question then becomes, what do you do if you, get, if you have fractions in the equations off to the start? Well, what I would do, um, if you notice our step one is already done here, we know what y is, okay? So we're going to substitute that for the y in the other equation. So that's step two. So we already know y equals negative one-half x plus two. But in step two, when I substitute, I have negative one-half x plus two equals three-fourths x plus seven. And notice, this is like equations we got in an earlier chapter. If they have fractions, what do you do? You multiply each term by the common denominator, which is four in this case. So I take four times negative one-half x plus 4 times 2 equals 4 times 3 quarters x plus 4 times 7. And when you do that, you get negative 2x plus 8 equals 3x plus 28. And now you can solve plus 2x minus 28. And I end up with a negative 20 equals 5x. I divide by 5. And I end up with negative 5 or negative 4, excuse me, equals x. And now that I have that, now I can go ahead and do step 3. So once I know negative 4 is x, I can put it in one of these equations y equals 3 fourths times negative 4 plus 7, which says y equals negative 3 plus 7, multiplying those, which is equal to 4. So now y is 4, and x is negative 4. So my answer is negative 4, 4 as an ordered pair. And then I want to check it in the other equation is uh, 4 equal to negative 1 half x times negative 4 plus 2. Well, negative 1 half times negative 4 is positive 2, and 4 equals 2 plus 2. So I've done it correct, so I can go on to the next problem. And that's how you check, all right? So if you have fractions, that's what you do. Um, the only other thing that they do in this lesson is they do um, some story problems, some math riddles, where you're going to write two equations. So, for instance, the sum of two numbers is 81. So, x plus y equals 81, two numbers, sum. One number is 41 more than the other. So you can say x equals y plus 41. So it's 41 more than y is equal to x. So there's your two equations, and you can work it out from that point to solve it. Okay? That's the main trick. You'd solve it the same way we've been doing, but that's pretty much your assignment in this case. So good luck, and we shall talk to you later. Bye.